The unblended mathematics is independently the poetry of rational ideas. Everything around us is mathematics. Wow, everything around us is numbers. Hey, Miss K here. Welcome to Maths Pro, making your mathematics journey enjoyable, satisfying, and definitely rewarding. Good day, everyone. Today we are going to look at linear programming. We are going to be looking at uh, drawing graphs of inequalities. So we are going to draw graphs of inequalities. When we talk about inequalities we are talking about sort of equations but then instead of an equal sign we have symbols like greater than less than greater than or equal to or maybe less than or equal to so these are the symbols that we are going to have in our kind of equations then we call them inequalities so we are going now to graph those inequalities now in addition to graphing inequalities we are also going to do some shading and in linear programming because there are other topics like locus where we are also going to 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 do some shading but in linear programming we always shade the unwanted region so here we always shade the unwanted region now after shading our unwanted region, we will then have our solution. It depends now on how the question comes. As we graph our inequalities, we are going to use either a solid, a straight solid line or a broken line. So when do we use a straight solid line? When we have a greater than or equal to. When we have a greater than or equal to or a less than or equal to symbol. Meaning there is an equal sign involved. Just a hint to, to help you remember sign involved when we have an equal sign involved we use a solid straight line that is something like that so that's what we are going to graph inequalities that involve an equal sign meaning we have a symbol greater than or equal to or less than or equal to now but when we have a strictly greater than or a strictly less than, meaning in this case, there is no equal sign involved. When there's no equal sign involved, we then use a broken line. So what is that? We are going to use something like that to graph this inequality. As we graph these inequalities, we will also look at uh, two conditions, two situations. There are times when only one variable is involved. So we will look at one variable involved. For example, x is greater than or equal to negative 2. There's only x there. So these are some examples here. So there's only x involved. So I'm just drawing my or graphing this inequality depending on my x axis because it's only one variable involved. Or perhaps I could look at another example like maybe y is less than or equal to 0. Another good example could be maybe negative 1 is less than or equal to y, but y is strictly less than 4. There's still just one variable involved there. We could have two variables involved. For example, x plus y is less than 10. There we have our x and we have our y and then our inequality. So there we have two variables involved. So today we are going to look at a few examples. We'll start with when we have one variable involved and then we look at other examples when we have two variables involved. Starting with inequalities that involve or that involves only one variable. Now the first 
or the question here is for each of the following inequalities shade the unwanted region remember we are shading the unwanted region and we always shade the unwanted region in linear programming so we have a few examples here we have three examples so we have one a x is greater than negative two b y is less than or equal to zero and then we have um, negative one is less than or equal to y but y is strictly less than three the first thing you want to do for each of the questions you're not going to solve them together, but you're going to start with, we're going to do one by one. The first thing that you want to do is draw, or draw your graph. When we draw a graph, we need our y-axis and our x-axis, and we should label them. Then we have to label our axis, meaning I indicate my positive values. It does not quite matter how far you go, but make sure the number that is involved on the x-axis is included. So I have a negative one here and negative two there. I could go beyond and go to negative three just so that I can see because I'm at negative two. I want to know what is happening on the left side of negative two and what is happening on the right just so that I can be able to decide on which part is my wanted and which part is my unwanted. So we continue labeling there and um, we continue labeling. So it's one and it's two. I could go until three. You're not limited to any these numbers. You just have to make sure the number involved is included. Now, what you are then going to do then, the first one, meaning after I've drawn my, my grid, meaning I just want my X and Y axis labeled, then I will make this an equal sign, meaning I'm going to change this to X is equal to negative 2. Why am I changing that? So that I'm able to draw the line. Because a graph, a, a graph, a line has to come from an equal sign. Because an inequality involves so many values. If I'm saying X is greater than negative 2, then all the numbers greater than negative two satisfy that that inequality so then i won't be able to have a straight line or a graph there so i need to be able to make it a graph and that's why i say x is equal to negative two so i'm going to also take note or remind myself am i going to use a broken line or a straight line because the moment you use a straight line why are you supposed to use a broken or, the, or otherwise you are not going to get your marks so you want to make sure. So I look at my symbol and I see that this symbol is strictly greater, meaning it's strict. So then I take note at the back of my mind, I remember I must use a broken line. So where am I going to put, to put that broken line? At x equal to negative 2. So I'll go to my x-axis, then I go to negative 2, then I see negative 2 is there, then I make or make sure I draw my line. This line is x equal to negative 2 so i have drawn it then now i want to shade because they they told you that you have to shade the unwanted region so i want to shade my unwanted region so what i want to know is which part of from this line is it to my right or to my left which side is unwanted so to make sure of that or to get that value you want to now come back to this inequality here then i choose values from this side of of negative 2 let's say you choose negative 1 then you put it in your inequality. Then you ask yourself, is this true? Is negative 1 greater than negative 2? And you say yes. Negative 1 is actually greater than negative 2. To test, if, because some of you get confused with negative numbers, negative values. Try taking a positive value because you know positive values are also on that same side of, of, of the line x equal to negative 2. So choose a number like 2. Then you put it in your inequality. Just replace the x. Then you see, does it make sense? It's 2 greater than negative 2. Then you know, yes, 2 is greater than negative 2. You could even choose the number like 5, as long as you know it's that side of the number line on your x-axis. So I'm going to make sure, then I see that this part is actually my wanted region because it makes it true. It makes the inequality true. That means I can't shade that because it's, it's, it's wanted, it's true. So then I can already conclude that then it actually, this actually tells me that this is the part that I must shade because that is the part that, that is unwanted. So I'm shading. Let's say you didn't look at that side first. You didn't choose numbers from that side. You chose numbers from this side of negative two, say negative three, the negative three that you, you, you see there. So we then substitute or replace negative, uh, I mean, X with negative three, and then we, we, we try to see now, does it make sense? Does, is our inequality true? Is negative 3 greater than negative 2? Then you know, no. Negative 3 is actually less because I know that on my number line, I increase from my left to my right. So there's no way I would say negative 3 then is greater. So that is actually false. Yeah. That means if it's false, 
then it's your unwanted region because it's what it doesn't suit the in quality so that's what you are going to shade okay so that is that is a if we have y's less than or equal to zero remember the first thing you want to always do is first draw your y and your x axis you label them let's say one two we don't really need a lot of numbers here because we see this y zero so it's already um, there so we have one two one, negative one negative two negative one negative. We then change our inequality and make it an equation meaning we are going to replace the less than or equal to symbol with us with the equal to meaning we are just going to have equal to zero why are we doing that we want to know where is our line and then we ask ourselves are we going to use a solid straight line or are we going to use a broken line so here we see an equal sign is involved so that tells you i am then going to use a straight solid line so i'm going to do that and i see that where is the line y is equal to zero the line y is equal to zero is exactly in the middle here because if i have a line like that and zero is there i have one here and i have negative one so zero is here y equal to zero is there so then i just extend it then i see that okay this actually tells me that the line y is equal to zero is just the x-axis because on the x-axis y is zero so that is my line that's where my shading is going to start but i want to know which part is is going to be my my unwanted region Go back to your inequality the original inequality that you are given y is less than or equal to zero then you substitute y with any value here below let's say we start below to see if that's our wanted or unwanted region so we are now going to say okay this is negative one less than or equal to zero and we see that okay but is negative one less than or equal to zero then we know yes it is less so that means that is true. We can try negative two, less than or equal to zero. Yes, it is true. That means this is your wanted region. So I'm not gonna shade my wanted region. I'm going to shade my unwanted. Here you can also conclude and say, okay, but they are asking me why is less than or equal to zero? Then all those values are below the x axis. So I'm just gonna shade the ones that are more because i always shade what i don't want okay that is b so we continue to the last one c remember we're just going to do the same thing except that we are doing we're accommodating two numbers at the same time but it's still on the same axis on one variable involved so now what i then do then is here i have a negative one equal to y so that's what i have i'm gonna look at this and then I'm going to look at that as two things just to, to have to do to apply what we just did in the first example. So here I have if I don't want I feel like this looks too ugly. So let me just say okay, y is equal to negative one because it means the same thing. Just changing it just to suit me. So I can write it like that and say, okay, I'm actually at y equal to negative one. So I'm here. And what is happening there? I must tell myself there. That it's a solid line because there's an equal sign involved. So the first thing I want to do then is draw my straight line going through negative y is equal to negative 1. And remember, this is the line y equal to negative 1. So what did we do? Let me just clean this up a bit. I hope you, you are able to see there. Just to have some space there. So what did you do there? You just drew your line y is equal to negative 1. Why did you do that? Because you want to, to see where are you and what do you have there. Because you are y equal to 3 is here. But I should not forget that this should be a broken line. So I'm going to draw my broken line. This we can get rid of. This is something we just need to take note of or to remember. So we draw our broken line. So after drawing our broken line, we then do our shading. It's up to you. You could have decided I'm already just going to, to shade it at the same time. Or I could do one by one and shade. Um, it's still okay. Let's say we drew our lines first and now we want to shade. So we see that Y is in the middle. So it, it means, and we are told that Y is less than 3. So I go to y is equal to 3. Where is y less than 3? Below. 
because we know on the y-axis we increase when we go up or we and we decrease when we go down so when i'm at three i must go down to to, to make that inequality true so if i go down i will see that those are the values where y is less than three so that is your wanted region for that part meaning then here i would shade this top part because this would then be my unwanted region because if this is my wanted that is my unwanted then i go to the other side again does not matter which one you start with as long as you are looking at, at, at it the way i'm doing so you if i have negative one is less than or equal to y and y is greater than negative one or equal to negative one these two things are the same how are they the same as long as remember some people get confused with this symbol if i'm thank you for watching please subscribe for more videos